Hey everybody, it's Seasack Panda, and as you can tell by the title here, today we want to talk about English A Paper 2, what to expect and what to do when you're handling it. Alright, so this is basically just me sharing the strategy that I used for English A when I was doing it, but I think that a lot of what I did was pretty valid, and I think that it should be able to help you when you're doing your exam, okay? Alright, so the first thing I want to do, very much like the video that I had done on English B, um, if you're doing English B, you maybe should check that one out as well, is that I want to go over the the basics, the news on uh, English A Paper 2. Alright, so the good news is that there are really only these four questions to answer, and that they're super predictable. Every time the exam comes around, they're asking the same about the same four types of writing, the same four topics, right? You have a choice in question three of whether you're going to answer the story writing question that's in here with uh, prompts given to you by the picture that they supply or whether you're going to choose the sentence prompt that you have to include in what you write. So it's a little bit of a choice there, right? The bad news is that formatting of the responses can be kind of tough because it's really something that you have to get just right and you do have a lot of information to actually present there's not a lot of time to do much more than just plan exactly how you're going to write this and then write it down. So there's that. And while the choice of the prompt is kind of between two things that are almost exactly the same, and depending on whether you're good at interpreting pictures or not, I am not, but you might be, then you have that sort of choice there, okay? Now the next thing is that, unfortunately, and kind of the stressful part of this is that you don't have a whole lot of time to do too many more things as I say beyond just planning on the planning section that they give you what you're gonna say and then writing it down. This is also done in pen so there's not a lot of room for correcting errors, right? That's kind of the thing that makes planning so important. So to counteract this, which is quite a bit of work to do, this is the strategy that I used, right? It starts with knowing the question structure of the four sections because they're going to be asking you to write a summary and to do some expository writing or basically explaining, to write a story, do some creative writing, and then there's persuasive or argumentative writing. Okay? So that's what's covered in the four sections. Now, the idea here is that you really want to use the planning area that they give you. When you flip that paper open, you're going to see that next to each question, they have this whole blank page that's not judged, it's not marked, you can write anything you want and then it doesn't count towards the marks that you get on the exam, right? So this is like your best friend because you want to plan everything as much as you possibly can so that it turns out that when you come to writing what you're actually going to be presenting for marks, it's pretty near to as perfect as you could have hoped to get it under the circumstances, okay? The next thing is that we're going to choose a vocabulary because this is an English exam, this is a great time to use those uh, $2 words. Don't use them if you obviously don't understand what they mean and you end up just kind of hurting yourself and sounding really weird. But it's an important thing to think about to add in some richer and more complex vocabulary as you are structuring all of these responses, okay? And so you're going to write once you've got all of those things together and planned and the result should turn out pretty good. Now in terms of the actual structure of the essay on this side, we see that you have about 40 minutes to do each section. Alright, so you do want to be bearing that in mind. There was no clock in the room when I was doing this exam and I didn't have a watch, so I ended up being like just hyper about finishing faster and then I ended up with like 20 minutes or something left over after, so it's possible to do this in less time and do it really well. But if you do have a way to keep an eye on the time and then you are noting your time, which I would recommend, well, don't do it if it's stressing you, but otherwise, you just want to know that you're working with about 40 minutes for each of these, okay? So section A consists of these uh, 240 words, I say on average. That's just because it's five sentences plus 120 words summary. People sometimes forget about the five sentences, but you do get five marks for that, and that's five marks out of about 25, I believe, so it's a pretty significant amount of the thing. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Section B is about 300 words. They want you to translate some facts for them from just raw facts that they put on the page anyhow it is, and you're supposed to put that together into 
a report or a letter or some type of factual communication that will be able to allow your reader to understand what went on or to use the facts on it, right? A lot of times people refer to this as the letter writing section and I kind of made the mistake, I say mistake, but I kind of made the mistake of assuming that it was maybe going to be a letter and then when I got there it was actually to write a report on an accident. So I definitely recommend that you just move away from the letter writing idea and think about writing something that's factual in a way that the audience can understand, okay? So the third section is section C and that asks you to do some creative writing. They want you to write a short story that's based on a prompt that's either a picture or a sentence that they give you on that particular day. Um, they want it to be about 450 words or so. We're going to talk a little more in depth about that. And then section D has to do with persuasive or argumentative writing, which is basically you deciding which side of an opinion that you support. So you choose this or that, and then you write down in a couple of uh, a couple of sentences, yes, why you support this, and you kind of would be able to say that you could convince somebody who holds the opposing view to sort of see it your way. So that's what that's about. And that's a shorter section. It's like 250 to 300 words, so there's that. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that we actually have to get through here. So the biggest part of this strategy is going to be planning. We are going to use the blank planning area, all right, in the notes, and we're going to make pretty much a note of everything before we actually write it. I know this can feel like you're just doing double the work and that you're not actually getting anything that counts down on the paper, but you don't want to use up the space that you have available and then be scratching out ideas or forget some important thing and need to stick it in later. That can get kind of messy kind of quickly and even if you are doing exactly what you thought was correct because you did plan, you might still end up missing something. So give yourself the best possible chance and just use the planning section that they are not going to judge you for, they're not going to mark you for, and write down the order of things in particular. This is what you want to write, the order of the things that you want to include in the piece that you write, all right? It's also worth noting, as you see here, this is a basic outline. This is basically how all writing is. You just start with an introduction that says, this is what I'm going to be talking about. Then you say whatever needs to be said, factual or even if it's a summary type of thing or whatever, whatever needs to be said goes through. You add any further details, you cut to the outro. The outro should be kind of a reflection or an echo of what you said in the intro. And that's an outline that works for almost every kind of writing every time, once you just switch it up a little bit based on whatever you're doing. So I just stuck that in there so you can see what I mean by an outline if I say that, and what I mean by planning. That's kind of where you're going with this. Okay, so we're going to talk about now the specific strategy for summary writing, which is the first section, section A. Now your goal here, and what they want you to do, is to explain the passage briefly in your own words, right? So this passage is something that's like four, maybe 500 words long. It's like, uh, you know, don't quote me on that. I think it's that long, but I know it's four or five paragraphs is what I really meant to say. So it's like an article from maybe a newspaper, magazine, something like that. But it's very wordy. And even when you're reading it, you'll notice that it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here, which maybe they put in to be part of the challenge, but it can be challenging. So your goal is to do two things. The first one is to pull out five main points from that section. And the second one is to summarize all of the information. So repeat back to them all of the information that they gave you in this passage that they just had you read. But they want you to do it with only 120 words or less. All right. Your planning area is going to be so much help in terms of pulling out the five main points. What I would suggest you do, because this is the first section, um, you might be tempted to like rush through it or speed read or think that you'll come back to it later or something like that, but I would recommend that you use the first two minutes of that exam really reading and understanding what this piece is about. Even if you're a good reader, sometimes it's really tough to tell what points they want you to bring out here because it's a very wordy piece that they start with, okay? All right, so as you're reading, like read through it once, come back and read it again, 
and jot down what you think could possibly be the main points here on your planning area, right? Now, you might not get exactly five points, you might get more than five points, but just pick the ones that you think are best and try to arrange them kind of like sequentially going in an order so that when you come to writing those five points on the actual lines that count for your five marks, it will kind of flow nicely. And then when you come to writing your summary, you're basically going to translate those same five points into a paragraph. But what you're going to do is make it feel not like five sentences that aren't connected. You're going to connect them together at the ends by using like linking words. So this would be like words like however, subsequently, despite this, as a result, consequently, those kinds of words and phrases, right? But you don't just want to throw those in however vikey vi just because you think yeah okay i put the words in you want to make sure that you're actually connecting the meaning of the first sentence to the sentence that comes after it when you use this word so if it's really that you've condensed the information that they gave you in maybe like a whole paragraph of the original thing if you were given something along the lines of there's a law that dogs are cheaper to own than cats and Caribbean people like to buy dogs and you've condensed those ideas down into your topic sentences, then you could go along with something like um, legal intricacies make cat ownership expensive. Therefore, Caribbean people prefer dogs, right? You don't want to use too many of the words from the original piece because the idea here is to be able to put this in your own words and also to use less words, so you need to find some of those words that really condense ideas together, right? I have some suggestions here. You see this here, imagine that there's like a $500 reward for being able to tell somebody rich what this passage means, but like, just picture every word that you use to explain is minus $1 from the prize money, and every time you reuse a word or a phrase that was already in the passage, that's minus $5. And if you add any of your own facts, like you just pull in something from your own brain that wasn't even in the passage to begin with, that's minus $15, right? As long as you look out for those three things, in terms of your word count, using your own words as opposed to just repeating exactly the words that they use for the same idea, and you don't add any of your own facts, you should be good to go, all right? So that's pretty much it for that section. Section B has to deal with factual writing, and the goal here is to organize the facts that were given and present them in a way that makes good sense to the reader. So they're going to give you like a kind of cluttered bunch of facts that kind of make sense, but it's just like loose facts. And what they want you to do is put it together into a format. So it might be a letter, it might be an email, it might be some form of like a report or something like that. You basically want to take those facts and rearrange them in your planning area into something that you think makes sense, right? Try not to leave anything out because that's kind of going to be a problem. So you want to look for things like, you know, like dates, locations, those kind of where, when type of questions. And then you want to put those things probably kind of first to set the scene. And then you want to move to who or what, why, those kinds of things, depending on whatever they give you, right? So pretend that you're just somebody who's actually reading your letter, reading your report or whatever, and see if you would actually understand what happens, right? So that's kind of the trick for getting past this particular part. All right, section C is short story writing. Your goal here is to write a short story and to show that you know how to use story mechanics like um, foreshadowing and dialogue and the concept of a beginning, a middle, and an end action sequence, these kinds of things, right? Now, because this is a short story, you actually don't have a lot of time to develop all of these things, so you do want to pick something that's really simple. And you're going to be guided, of course, by the prompts that they give you. So you're selecting either the picture or the uh, sentence that you're actually going to have to include in what you write. Just pick one of those as your prompt, whichever one feels easier for you. I chose the sentence because that was easier for me. I have trouble reading pictures, so that's that. Then you want to look at the constraints that are being uh, set for you by what they've chosen. So if the picture clearly shows that it's day, then it's going to be strange for you to try to set your story at night. Or if the picture shows that 
you are operating outside, then you don't want to start setting a whole story to be something that's inside an office, right? So the same way you can look at the sentence that they give you, and if they say that there's a she involved in the story, then she, a woman, a female, is definitely going to have to be involved in something here. If they've inserted a dog or something with four legs, then you know that, okay, an animal is going to have to be involved. So you want to look at your topic sentence and kind of pull out um, any of the things that are already like limiting you or setting the boundaries of what you can do. And then you want to begin to build on those. How you're going to build, right, is you're going to take words that kind of match the scene. So as you see here, if you've got daytime, then you want to start thinking about things that are gleaming, bright, glistening, uh, reflection, things like, you know, warmth, fresh air, because you're moving towards it not just being day, but being outside, right? So you just want to brainstorm quickly some things that have to do with uh, the surroundings that you're going to be in, because you're going to need to use those when you're trying to build the setting. Again, you don't want to get halfway into the story and the audience is still wondering, um, is this taking place inside or outside? Like, are we underwater? What's going on? So you definitely want to make sure that from the beginning you're setting some of this up. But any of these other things, like, you know, reflective puddles or sinister tapping or something even as cheesy sounding as the gentle breeze was like a mother's touch, that kind of thing um, will help you to set the scene. Just want to give a few more pro tips on this because when people have the opportunity to get creative, sometimes they get too creative, okay? As a pro tip, you don't want to use too much blood and violence, okay? I've seen in the subject reports that a lot of people do that. They go for like a kind of TV level of violence, which isn't exactly what they want you to do. So what you definitely want to do is try to build an action sequence or build some kind of conflict that happens in the story. It's still a story, but people didn't have to die. There wasn't like mayhem and like an eight cost mashup. You want to try to avoid that, right? The next thing is you want to pick a really, really simple topic as your storyline because you have a short amount of time and a few words. Honestly, by the time you set the scene and build up to a little bit of action, it's practically over, okay? You want to make sure that you hit that action point somewhere around the middle-ish, which will be like 250, 300 words. You want the thing that's going to happen to be happening around there, all right? All right, so you don't want to put the topic sentence um, right away just at the beginning, just smack it in there like you just start with that, which just feels like a cop-out. You don't want to do that, and then you don't want to leave it for exactly last, like you barely remember to stick it in, right? So try to get it in somewhere in the middle. Then you want to use some dialogue, which is reported speech that goes in quotes. But you don't want to use so much that it was like this whole thing was just people talking, okay? Then you want to use some uh, richer vocabulary. You all the time will get more marks for saying something like somebody hissed or stuttered or saying a word that's like how they did the thing as opposed to just saying that they did it. So, you know, instead of said, you have these uh, different versions here. Instead of ran, you can say that someone, you know, stumbled away, they sprinted away, they galloped away. Any one of these different words, it tells you more of how it was done. It uses the same word to say that motion is happening, but it allows the reader to enjoy the story more, right? More descriptive. And so in section D, which is the last persuasive writing section, your goal here is to write a piece that expresses an opinion um, in favor of this or that. So what you want to do here is you want to pick a side of the issue, whatever issue they give you, and then the format, it could be like a speech or it could be like a, an opinion column that you write to a newspaper or something like that. But you want to try and embody the spirit of whatever they asked you to pretend to be. So like if it's a speech, you want to put on your ladies and gentlemen type of you know, persona. So you want to imagine that you're trying to convince someone that you respect as to why something is better than something else. So what you generally want to get across, because this is only a few words, 250 or so, you want them to be able to tell which view you support, right? You want to write like maybe about two to three reasons why you support it. That's like, okay, this is my point of view, express that opinion. Then you want to make sure that you address a little bit the other side of the opinion. So you want to write like one good reason why you could see why somebody might think that or why somebody might have that opinion or why that's like a valid concern. And then you want to come back to but or however. Basically my idea is the best one and finish up with that. And 
Again, this will follow the same type of outline of just the intro, what needs to be said, what needs to be said, any kind of closing details, in this case the um, conflicting view, and then you want to come back to basically what you said your opinion is and come to a conclusion though. And that's basically the wrap for that. So that was the walkthrough of paper 2, English A. That's what you can expect to find on there. That's one of the approaches you can use to tackling what you're going to see. If I am able to, I will link a sample response from any of the things that I did while practicing, and we'll see if we can go with that, okay? That's it. I wish you the best on your exam, and I will see you another time.